Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Want to welcome you once again to At the Master's Feet. Pastor Regina here just praising God for his goodness and his mercy. You know what? We just had a powerful time in the word of God, in the presence of God. We've just been blessed tremendously by his word. Amen. Let me tell you, nothing's going to bless you like the word of God. It's a lamp unto your feet. It's a light unto your pathway. Amen. So listen, always remember, you take your word. You hide it in your heart. The word should be in two places. That's not even my message, but I feel the need to say it. It needs to be in your heart and in your mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, we preach today about the king of glory just a reminder a reminder to us as God's children that God is still in control amen that God still sits on the throne and no matter what is going on in our nation and in the world God reigns supreme hallelujah don't ever take your eyes off of him don't deny him in this season amen acknowledge him as Lord of all amen I want you to enjoy this message listen tell your family and your friends about it amen and just be blessed and I'm going to see you right after the broadcast to come to the house of worship it was the spirit of the living God. God's spirit makes us alive. Hallelujah. And you don't fear people who can just destroy the body. You fear the one who can destroy the body and the soul and determine your eternity. That's the one that you fear in reverence. Hallelujah. Man can't do that for you. Fear God and him alone. He wants to use us for his glory. Listen at me. Don't get draw, drawn off with the distractions. Get, don't get drawn off with deceptions and the things that the enemy is doing. Don't, don't do it. We got work to do. The church has work to do. Souls still need to be saved. The gospel still needs to be preached. You still need to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You need to still speak a word in season. Amen. You need to stand boldly, walk holy, live upright, and set a good example for those who are watching you. So don't get drawn off in the rhetoric, amen, of the world. Hallelujah. Reverence and praise our God because he is the king of glory. That's the title of our message, the king of glory. And we want to focus on him. We want to keep our eyes on him, amen. Listen how. Isaiah says it in Isaiah 40 when he's addressing the people about the sovereignty and power of Almighty God. God is speaking a word to his people. And then he tells them about making idols and creating things and the power of an idol versus his power. Isaiah 40, it says it like this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he, God, who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain, spread them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor gets weary. His understanding is unsearchable. This is the God we serve. He gives power to the weak, to those who have no might. He increases your strength. You can't get it from a man. Even the youth faint and are weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord. In the Hebrew, that word wait is kweva. It means to bind. It means to hope. It's as if a rope has been intertwined. It, it's now just become one. 
that you become so one with your father, hallelujah, that you're not just looking around and waiting and, and no, you don't know what you're waiting on, but this waiting is an expectancy. This is a waiting of hope that I know God is going to bring me out. I know God is going to see me through. I know God is going to perform his good word to me. You just read that even you faint and are weary. Those who are supposed to be strong. Young men, hallelujah, in their strength. Even them, they have to trust in God. You have to depend on God. You can't do it in your own strength. You've got to know that God is going to strengthen you. You've got to know he's your keeper. You've got to know he's a shield unto you, your glory, the lifter of your head. You have to know that. Hallelujah. And you can't depend on your own strength. We have to depend on God, the king of glory, the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Listen to what he tells Job. I'm going to read this in the message Bible. After Job got through complaining, listen how God answers him. He said, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job. Up on your feet and stand tall. I have some questions for you and I want some straight answers. Where were you when I created the earth? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you when I created the earth? Ooh, I feel this, y'all. My God, hallelujah. Tell me since you know so much. Who decided its size? Certainly you know that. Who came up with the blueprint and the measurements? Oh, my God. Woo, Jesus, hallelujah. How was its foundation poured? Where were you? Where were you? Hallelujah. Were you there? Do you understand? Hallelujah. Can you perceive the mind of God? Can you comprehend? Can you search this out? Where were you when I set the cornerstone? Woo! While the morning stars sang in chorus and all the angels shouted praise. Oh, my God. Woo! Glory. Who took charge of the ocean? When it gushed forth as a baby from the room, from the womb, that was me. I give a command to the ocean. I shut up its doors and tell it, you can't come no further now. <laughs> Here's your stopping place. Y'all, the last time I was on the beach, it fascinated me. This word came to me. I tell you, those waves would go up, man. They were, they were, it was like, oh, they angry. And they were, it's like they hit a glass wall. Who bow, stop. Because they got a command. You can't come no further. Because I created you. And I've commanded you and given you your decree. Hallelujah. Verse 12, listen to what he says. Have you ever ordered the morning? Told the son to get up. <laughs> I bet you what? You can go out there and scream all day from, five, from 4 a.m. to 7. Hallelujah. It's not going to come up until God commands it. You can go. You can say. You can speak. Hallelujah. But the son, day spring, knows his place. Hallelujah. It's already been given a command. Were you there? Can you do that? Do you know anybody that can do that? If you know somebody that commands them or causes the stars to sing and the angels to shout, serve them. But if you ain't found nobody, you better serve God because he can. Hey, glory. Woo, I feel this thing, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Job, where were you? Where were you, Job? Where were you? Where were you, people of God? Regina, where were you? You, you think you know so much? Then, then where were you? Hallelujah. When I formed you in your mama's belly, you had no knowledge. You didn't know where you were. I created you. In heaven, I conversated with you. I ordained you before your mama and daddy even thought about you. I set a decree in you place purpose in you that was me somebody say that was God hallelujah that was God king of glory hallelujah Woo! 
glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Shabboshaya. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Yes, sir. He's done it all. Brother Ricky, you show right about it. Hallelujah. He has done it all. Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. You can stop right there. You can read that one for the rest of the week. That God is our refuge and strength. That he's a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be moot? Why are you afraid? Why are we fearful? What are we afraid of? It's a spirit. Take authority over it. Well, I'm afraid of the unknown. I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Read your Bible. There are precious promises for you in this word. Hallelujah. You just read one. He's your refuge. He's your strength. He's a very present help. All you got to do is take this word. Begin to, to partake of it. I heard one, one lady say, she said, you know, when something's going on with me, I just get in the word until I'm satisfied. Get in the word until you're satisfied. He said, though the earth is moved, though the mountains be carried into the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, calmly think about all of this. Hallelujah. There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place, the tabernacles of the Most High. You want to know where else there's a river? There's a river in us. Hey, woo, glory. Thank you, Lord God. I'm going to be in you rivers. Hey, woo, living waters down on the inside of each and every one of us. There's a river. Somebody say there's a river in me. Hallelujah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Ah, Jesus. There's a river. Thank you, Jesus. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. Let me tell you, you can take that word for yourself. Just like there's a river in you. God is in the midst. Christ in us. He's our hope of glory. Hallelujah. Then he gives a command in, in verse 8. He said, come behold the works of the Lord. Come and see. Take a look around you and see all of the things God has created. <laughs> behold the grass, behold the birds, behold the sun, behold his creation. Thank you, Lord. But see, in Romans 1, they knew of the creator. But they chose to stop worshiping the creator and started worshiping creation. Things around them. Hallelujah. Instead of almighty God. The Bible says this, he makes wars to cease. He makes wars to cease. He makes wars to cease until the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow, cutteth the spear in sunder, burneth the chariot in fire. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Do you believe that? That God will be exalted, exhorted, hallelujah. We've got to exalt the Lord, hallelujah. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He's our refuge. He's our hiding place. He's our high tower. He is the king of kings. He is the king of glory. Oh, and there is nobody to be compared unto him. Deuteronomy 10 and 21 in the New Living Translation says this. He alone is your God. The only one who is worthy of your praise. The one who has done these mighty miracles that you have seen with your own eyes. Thank you, Lord God. Exodus 20 and 3 says, have no other God before you. Have no other God. He says, have no other God before me. 
Remember when Moses went up on the mountaintop the first time to receive God's law? The people got restless. He's been gone too long. So what did they do? They convinced Aaron to fashion them a golden calf, an idol to worship. There wasn't a golden calf in Egypt. Well, there may have been, but there wasn't one that they knew as God. No golden calf brought deliverance to them. The, the plagues that came in and Egypt is affected and Goshen is untouched. How does that happen? By the hand of God. By the hand of God. Not a golden calf. Not an idol. Hallelujah. Not my car, my house. Not my job. The king of glory. There was no golden calf part in the Red Sea. Causing you to walk over on dry land. That was the hand of God. I did that. Ooh, God did that. No man delivered us from sin, rescued us from the pits of hell. That was God Almighty. God spared our lives, spared the lives of our children. God does that for us. And y'all know we done got ourselves into some situations and some circumstances. We've gotten ourselves into some stuff. But God brought us through the storm and the rain. And we are still standing, still trusting, still believing. Still acknowledging him as our king. That's what we should be doing. We don't put our confidence in man, but we put our confidence in God. And let me tell you something. Else. Don't you let nobody hold you hostage as if you can't make it without them. Don't you dare do that. Or you know you need me. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. You, people can contribute to your happiness. They can't make you happy. You need to understand that. That's going to be something that's going to come from the core of who you are and your belief, something down on the inside of you. But you don't let nobody hold you hostage, treat you any kind of way and abuse you, saying you need me. You know you can't make it without me. Let's see. Let's watch God. God did that. I've been there. In your mind, the enemy will try to convince you now, you can't make it on your own. That's because you're not on your own. Hallelujah. Didn't we just say he's a very present help in trouble? Yes. That's what he is. That's what he specializes in. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something, preachers. Don't you let nobody hold you hostage and you stop preaching the word because they threaten they're going to leave. You better not. You better hear me today. You better preach the word. You better preach it in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke with all long suffering. Hallelujah. You let nobody dare step up to you and tell you, well, if you don't do this, we're leaving. I love you in Jesus. You got to love people, but you better open that door. Amen. And let me tell you something else, Pastor. Don't you threaten your people. Don't you try to hold them hostage over foolishness. Don't do that. We don't have time for that in this season. Let me tell you something that dropped in my spirit. This has been when I started pastoring. He said to me, I heard this. I know this was God. I can't make this up. He said, daughter, I want you. Daughter, I need you. But daughter, I don't have to have you if you don't want to obey me. Oh, guess what? That's all of our message. Oh, I want you. I need you. But now you don't want to do right. And you don't want to obey God. You don't want to obey the rules of the house. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Love you. Want you. Need you. My brother said deuces. Peace. Hallelujah. That's in the love of God. That's how much God loves us. He wants us to know, I need you in the earth. I need what you have. I've gifted you. I've ordained you. I've called you. I've anointed you. But it's my anointing. It's my call. It's my power. So you do what I tell you to do. You do it how I tell you to do it. You don't consult yourself and get in your own flesh. You're not running anything. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Preach the word, men and women of God. Teach the word. Prophesy. Hallelujah. Evangelize. Do whatever it is God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Even if you're not a part of the five-fold ministry, you're a very important part of the ministry. Thank you, Lord. We need every part of the ministry. Thank you, Lord God. We need your gifts. We need your talents, your helps, everything. We need it in the body of Christ. Now, we're going to close with Isaiah 6. Very familiar scripture. Isaiah 6. I'm going to read it out of King James. It says in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, my God. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips. I've dwelled in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched my lips, and my iniquity is taken away, and my sin purged. Also I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. Uzziah was a great king. He was a king that loved God. He was a king that began his ministry obeying God just like his father. Amen. That it was said that there was not a king like him since the time of Jehoshaphat in the days of Solomon. This man was smart. He was innovative. God used him. Oh, my God. God used this man to do so many mighty things that had never been done in the earth. And his name had spread abroad even to the border of Egypt. The nation of Israel prospered greatly under his leadership. But unfortunately, King Uzziah's fame and strength led to pride. And he forgot God. And he was struck with leprosy and had to live the remainder of his life confined to his home until the day he died. Now, when he dies, the nation goes into mourning. Although he had not been reigning as king, but he was still alive. And there was still hope. You got to realize this king reigned for 52 years. This is all they knew. They knew this man's great leadership. They knew how he, they were being blessed under this leadership. They knew they prospered. I mean, they conquered their enemy. Wow, name was spreading. He known in the earth. He's known throughout the regions. Hallelujah. But now that he's gone, what's going to become of our nation? What's going to become of us? They had looked at this earthly king so long, they no longer saw the Lord. Even the prophet who loved the king, it's even said in some of the study that I did that this was Isaiah's cousin, that Isaiah was Isaiah's cousin. But Isaiah, I believe, had also become dependent on him for the prosperity of the people. And now God's got to show himself. I got to show, I'm going to have to show myself, hallelujah. I got to kill off everything in your life that's taken your attention. I've got to kill off everything. I'm not talking about killing people, people of God, but there are some things I've got to destroy out of you. There are some things, hallelujah, you've got to lay aside. Some things that are hindering you. Some things that are keeping you out of my will. Some things that's blinding you and you can't see me. So when he died, God shows himself. Isaiah saw the Lord 
above the earthly throne stood the heavenly throne. Woo! Glory to God. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne. He was high and lifted up. Hallelujah. The earthly throne is no longer occupied by Isaiah. Hallelujah. And Isaiah now sees the true king, the king of glory. Hallelujah. He's come to announce to you today, I don't care what's been removed out of your life. I don't care what's got to go. You need to understand I'm still on the throne. Hallelujah. I'm the king of glory. I still rule and reign. I'm full of majesty and glory and splendor. Above his throne were the seraphims. Hallelujah. And they cried one to another. They cried, holy. Oh, my God. Every time they looked at him, they said, holy. Every time they flew, they said, holy. Who is the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. They said, the whole earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed by that message? Amen. Listen, I was blessed. I pray you were too. I just want to remind you, listen, we're here, Soul Gathering Ministries Community Church, we're here to stand in the gap with you. So if you are struggling in any area, if there is fear that's coming up on your heart, I just want to pray right now that we take authority over fear. Remember, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You don't have to be afraid of tomorrow. David said, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God will take care of his children. All we have to do is obey his voice, do what he tells us to do, and don't forget, he is our king of glory. Amen. Call us if you need us, 501-773-1400. For those of you who have already been calling, know that we're standing in prayer with you. Know that we're believing God's best for you because it is. We are here for you. We're standing with you, and we want you to know, amen, there is nothing too hard for our God. So I pray you were blessed, and I will see you next week at the Master's feet. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining our program, At the Master's Feet, with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.